You know, many, many years ago, and that's going to date me, in the Nola community and the Bloom Pilots had a dream. Let's take a look around at this building today of where we sit in that dream. Isn't it great? Also, along with us here in the museum, we have the National Bloom Classic is bursting at their seams with having lots of fun and a lot of hard work. I hope you've all been at the field <coughs> to see all the updates have been done. And they are housed here. And you know what? The Bloom Federation of America has a beautiful office here. And you folks should stop to see it today. Jill, the new employee, is... Where are you, Jill? She, and guess what? She called me the other day and she said, I had a little bit of time on my hands. I got a little bit here a little bit early. I pulled all the weeds around the parking lot out back. My dad would get by to pick them up. Uh, <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> this whole building is run by volunteers. <laughs> and they do very well. The other day I came down here and there was a gentleman on the roof with the power washer. And I thought, who on earth and don't fall off? Well, come to find out, he was one of our board members. I came back at 8 o'clock and he was still up there. And I thought, well, the machine is still running. His wife says, yeah, he's up there. He's up there all right. I, she said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm going to go in and scrub all the cement doors. Well, hey, I'll go with you. She said, do you have another scrub bucket? And I said, I'm sure we do. So anyway, she was scrubbing away along with me. And she stopped and looked at me and she said, you know, I have a part-time job. I think I'll just quit and volunteer for the museum. I didn't know whether to jump in the scrub bucket or what to do, but I really thanked her. So that's our volunteers. They answer questions from all over the world, not only in the United States, but in Europe. Uh, Becky does all the tours, not all of them, because she has trained most of the volunteers to do tours. That's where our money comes from, and you will see the upgrades that we have done around here with all the upgrades back here, the upgrades in the uh, gift shop, Again, all came out of our very personal budget. No money that was ever donated to us was used for that. So it's the tours, the mission, and what these volunteers do to make this place fly. And I'm so proud of it. And so proud to be a part of the Blue Museum. Uh, one of the things that I like a lot is we have the, the three ballooning organizations here in the community all under this one roof. Isn't that exciting? And, of course, we've all marketed ourselves out of the room. So, the National Balloon Museum Board has an obligation. And that obligation will be done very soon. So everyone can be happy here with more room, more office space, and everybody's going to, you know, it's just going to be one big happy world. So, I'm so glad you guys didn't take a nap this afternoon. You're all here for our prestigious event. Thank you. Hello. This is going to be an event. And I'm really excited because we have uh, two Edios, uh, and one of them. Um, is Jeff Thompson, and and you have to be uh, 40 years of flying, and he's this is his 40th year as well. He came at the nation, and then he was 16, so that you add those together, and he's all of 56. So I think that probably is the youngest person we're ever going to be able to get yours to work to. And then in the front row, we have probably the youngest. Um, learning pioneer. We usually think of pioneers having experienced and lived long and hard. Well, he's experienced and done everything. Top um, records in gas and hot air, and he's only 51. And so I think that's pretty cool too. And we're honoring both of them at the same time, and with all the experience that goes with 
the rest of them. So you are here to learn a lot and listen, and the stories are and you thought I was going to talk about So I'm so glad that you're here. And you people who don't know me, I am Becky Goodman. And um, I've been saying that to be fired. So I'm so thankful for coming. Well, good afternoon. My name is Ken Walter, and I'm on the board of directors for the National Balloon Museum. And I am your host for uh, this afternoon's event. First off, I'd like to acknowledge the two organizations that really mean the world to this building and this, and, and this ceremony, um, the Balloon Federation of America. We do have members of the board of directors here, and I'd like them to, to stand. We've got Dean Carlton, the president of the board of directors. Tim Boyd is the secretary. Uh, Scott Woogie. And the NAA representative is Troy Bradley. I think I've got all the BFA board members. If I miss somebody, just stand up and yell. Um, the National Balloon Museum Board of Directors, President Marlene Wall. There you go. Eddie Anderson. <laughs> Our treasurer is Adam McGee. <laughs> here are Dan Birch, standing back there, and Jim Fromm. <laughs> Am I missing someone else? I think I've got everybody. <laughs> so I think it's important that, that these boards be acknowledged, as, as including the Hall of Fame Selection Committee, who members of, are here of that as well. Um, if I could get Debbie Spaeth, Orb Olivier, Phil Clemens, and Jim Thompson to stand up. <laughs> I thought I saw Bill's here. Look, he's part of it. And we've also got John Davis on the committee. Who's not really the Hall of Fame Selection Committee meets every year about three or four times throughout the year. Um, working on the selecting the, of the members. We've got a long list of members of, of people that are very involved and very important to the Blue community that we choose from every year. Um, those names are, are selected by the Hall of Fame Selecting Committee, and then they're presented to the BFA Board of Directors, and then they make the final choice at the end, or at their October meeting, who the next year's recipients are going to be. 